Hello, this is Greg Olson. I'm TSI's industrial hygienist and the global product manager for the health and safety instrument line here at TSI. Today, I'd like to welcome you to a product training video for the DustTrack 2 single channel desktop photometer. What we're going to be doing today in this product application video is to look at the utilization of size selective inlet conditioners, specifically the impactors that come with the DustTrack 2. We've got impactors for PM10, respirable at PM4, PM2.5, and PM1 size fractions. A dust track 2 is a single channel photometer. So in order to get a size fraction, say PM10, which is also known as thoracic, or respirable, which is 4 microns and smaller, we need to use an inlet conditioner to cut the particle size down to either PM10 or PM4, PM2.5, or PM1. And we do that utilizing something called an impactor. And an impactor is an inlet conditioner, and what happens is, is the aerosol comes through the inlet. And based on the flow rate at 3 liters a minute, what will happen is the nozzle size will change to be a smaller diameter as you go smaller and smaller in particle size. So that three liter of air coming through, the velocity gets faster and faster. At PM10, it's three liters because it's a wide open tube. At PM4, you're looking at a little narrower tube, so the velocity goes faster. PM2.5, faster yet. In PM1, it's the narrowest inlet. So as those velocities increase, the air velocity increases, the particle mass concentration, meaning the particles of a mass size that's associated with the cut point, and it's a D50 cut point. That means 50% of the 10 micron particles get through, and 50% of them impact on the plate and everything larger. The same thing for a PM4 respirable impactor. It means that 50% of the PM4 particles, the respirable particles, get through, and 50% of the respirable particles and everything larger impacts onto the plate. And what it simply means is we change the air velocity. As the velocity increases, the mass concentration or the particle size decreases so that the particles then can still follow the airstream around the flat plate of the impactor and not impact and follow the airstream and go into the instrument. So what we do in setting up an impactor is that we take two to three drops of impactor oil and we place that onto the impactor centered head. There's three drops. What will happen is the impactor oil soaks into the centered head and as it does soak into the centered head, as particles continue to impact on the plate, the particles wick up the, the oil and they continue to present a wet surface to particles that continue to hit so that they don't bounce they will continue to stick to the centered plate giving us a longer lifetime for uh, the impactor to be used between maintenance intervals so what we do is we put the little impactor head inside the bottom portion of the impactor we screw on the top and in this case it's a PM10 inlet head once we screw that on snug, we put that onto the inlet of the dust track 2, twist it as you put it on, and now we're ready to do a flow calibration. The flow calibration for all of these impactors is 3 liters per minute. So what we will need to do is to utilize an external calibrator to show us what that flow rate is. Any of the calibrators that are commercially available on the market are certainly acceptable. We're going to be using a primary calibrator from TSI today, a 4146 mass flow meter. I'm going to attach that to the inlet of the impactor. And then I'm going to go down to the setup menu. And I'm going to press the setup tab. And over on the right, we get another row of tabs that come up. And I'm going to select Flow Cal. It's the second tab down. 
the pump is going to start running in the dust track and I'm immediately going to see a flow rate shown on the calibrator. And the real nice thing about these 4146 primary calibrators is that they're real time just like the instrument. I don't necessarily have to prime a bubble burette with a soap bubble for a couple of minutes to get it primed and ready to go. I'm immediately taking data, I'm looking at the flow rate, and what I want to advise everybody about a Dust Track 2 and the DRX is that you're going to see a span potentiometer range shown on the instrument's face. What that amounts to is you can go from 0.5, its lowest setting, to 1.5, its highest setting on the span potentiometer. That in no way is equated to 0.5 liters and 1.5 liters of flow. It's simply the minimum span potentiometer setting and the maximum. So right now we're running at 3.85, 3.085 liters per minute. About 85 cc's too high. So I'm going to touch the lower key here and reduce that by one. It is now at 3 liters and 58 cc's. I'm going to touch it one more time, bringing it down to 3 liters and 36 or 27 cc's. And I'm going to touch it one more time and we're getting it down to, alright, I've got 2.998 three liters were set. Over here towards the right you have an undo and a save button. I am going to hit the save. I want to save that calibration value and now we're essentially done doing a flow calibration. It is recommended to do your flow calibration with your impactor in line as it does create a slight back pressure. So if you just went and flow calibrated this without anything on the inlet and then put a impactor on, you could be off by about 50 or 60 cc's roughly, somewhere in that area. So I just want everybody to take note, always use your impactor, your inlet conditioner, when you're doing a flow cal with the Dust Track 2. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your showing up for today's video, and we'll see you next time.